The Huawei Watch GT Runner might actually be one of my favorite watches I tested so far in 2022. Now it isn't perfect, but my testing shows it does a few things really well. This means it's definitely a watch I'd recommend to people looking for a smartwatch or sports tracker. To explain why I'd recommend the Huawei Watch GT Runner, I'll scientifically test it in this video from a health tracking and sports perspective. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. In this video, we'll test the heart rate monitoring, sleep tracking, oxygen saturation measurements, GPS tracking and step counting of the Huawei Watch GT Runner. To switch things up a bit compared to my other videos, I want to start off by showing you the things the GT Runner is bad at, then move on to those things it does decently and close off with the things it does really well. However, let me first share the most important background information on this watch in about 2 minutes. The GT Runner is similar to the Huawei Watch GT3 when it comes to its internals. For heart rate tracking, both use the same sensors and the Huawei TrueScene 5.0 Plus technology. This technology already proved itself to be really good when used inside the GT3, showing better heart rate tracking results than more established brands like Garmin. However, what I really noticed about the GT Runner is just how much lighter it is than the GT3. Including the wristband, the GT Runner weighs just 54 grams, whereas the GT3 is about 20 grams heavier at 73 grams and you really notice this difference. Without the strap, the GT Runner weighs just 38.5 grams. According to Huawei, the GT Runner also supports the five major navigation satellite systems and has faster satellite search speeds, resulting in more accurate positioning. If that is actually true, we will of course put to the test in this video. In terms of the types of sensors, the GT Runner sports a typical accelerometer, gyroscope, geomagnetic sensor, optical heart rate sensor and air pressure sensor. One thing to note and which I really appreciated is that two sizes of wristbands are included in the box, so you can likely get a good fit no matter the size of your wrist. The watch tracks your sleep stages and can measure your heart rate, oxygen saturation and supposedly your stress levels, though as always I'm skeptical about this last one. The battery should last about 14 days with typical usage and the watch is of course waterproof up to 5 atmospheres. One thing I found a bit disappointing is that I couldn't get Strava integration to work. I could only select Adidas Running and commute as apps to connect to, but Strava was not listed as an option. I saw online that others were able to make this work, but I just wanted to note that I had these issues. The Huawei Watch GT Runner also has a number of features specifically aimed at runners, like an AI running coach and what Huawei calls the Huawei True Sport Professional Scientific Running Program, which claims to provide entry-level runners with data and suggestions on training intensity, training volume, recovery time and more, all from a single run. Finally, I should note that though I chose this somewhat flashy yellow and green version of the watch, there's also a more under the radar black version for people that like a watch that sends out less. However, on this channel we like to put health features to the test. Let's start by looking at the features that performed worse than my testing, which are luckily not that many, and close off with the things the Huawei Watch GT Runner did really well. And perhaps unsurprisingly, the thing the watch did least well is sleep stage tracking. Now by starting with the worst feature, this might make it seem like the GT Runner is not a good tracker, but there's even still one good thing about the sleep tracking of the GT Runner, and later in the video it will become clear why all the other features do really make me like this watch. To check if the GT Runner can detect my sleep stages, I'll compare it to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively reliable at sleep tracking. Here I show you an overview of the sleep test results. For getting an overall impression of how well the GT Runner performs, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I would also like to try on the GT Runner in the future. Now on top here are the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device, and on the left the sleep stages recorded by the GT Runner. I wore both the EEG device and the GT Runner to bed for 18 nights, and I will show you how close the predictions of the GT Runner are to those of the EEG. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 was predicted as each sleep stage by the GT Runner. If they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. First of all, we see that only about 56% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was also deep sleep according to the GT Runner, which is not that good. Quite often when the EEG device detected deep sleep, the GT Runner detected either light sleep or REM sleep. Looking at light sleep, this only agreed with the EEG device 44% of the time. Almost the same amount of light sleep detected by the EEG device was predicted as deep sleep by the GT Runner. Now REM sleep in particular agreed pretty poorly with the EEG device, only about one third of the time. 
In fact, more of what the EEG device detected as REM sleep was detected as light sleep by the GT runner. Awake detection also appears to be mediocre, with less than 50% of the awake moments, according to the EEG device, agreeing with the GT runner. The rest of it was predicted as light sleep and also as REM sleep. Now, this high light sleep percentage makes sense since light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake. Overall, this is not looking amazing so far. However, there are a few important details that this overview does not show. The first is that the GT runner detects a lot of extra deep sleep throughout the night, as is displayed here for one example night. Now just to explain what you see here, on top we have the sleep stage according to the Dream 2 EEG headband, with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. On the bottom we have a similar plot, but now for the GT runner. I've highlighted all the EEG recorded deep sleep in purple here, and again, as you can see, some of the deep sleep I had according to the EEG device was also detected as deep sleep by the GT runner, but a lot of extra deep sleep was also detected. And this example night shows another quite persistent problem of the GT runner, namely the fact that it tends to detect some really long awake moments. In green here I mark the awake moments according to the EEG device. You can see that this awakening right here, which lasted about 5 to 10 minutes according to the EEG device, was detected as lasting an hour by the GT runner. And this kind of behavior of the GT runner is something we see quite frequently for those nights where I tended to wake up more than normal. It seems like the GT runner extends some of those awake moments quite a bit, as you can also see right here for instance. If we compare these results to the results of some other watches, the first thing we notice is that they are very similar to what we saw for the Huawei Watch GT3 and some other Huawei watches. That is displayed here. On the left are the results we just saw for the GT runner, and on the right the same type of results but now for the GT3. As you can see, the percentages that match with the EEG device are very similar for both devices. Both are not particularly good at any of the sleep stages and show particularly poor overlap in terms of REM sleep. And we can put that into further perspective by comparing the agreement with the EEG device against the agreement of many of the other watches and sleep trackers I've tested over the last few years, as is displayed right here. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages, and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. The better a device, the more to the top right it is. And as you can see, the best agreeing devices include different Fitbits, Whoop straps, and a Withing Sleep Analyzer. Most Huawei devices cluster in this area right here, which indicates they're likely not particularly good at sleep tracking. If we now plot the GT Runner in the same plot, we see it basically performs about the same as all of the other Huawei watches. Now this makes sense as the algorithms used are likely very similar or the same. Based on these results, I would say that you should not rely on the sleep stage tracking of the Huawei Watch GT Runner to make any judgments about your sleep quality. It really does not stack up well against an EEG device. However, I did find one good use for the sleep tracking that the GT Runner provides. And that is detecting the moment you fall asleep and the moment you wake up. Here I show the differences in when the EEG device and the GT Runner detected me as waking up and falling asleep. The different nights are on the vertical axis and the time difference is on the horizontal axis, with in blue indicating falling asleep and yellow waking up. We want those differences to be as close to zero as possible and we can indeed see that most points are really close to zero. There's one blue point that's really far away from zero right here. This means that the Huawei Watch GT runner for that night detected me as falling asleep 74 minutes too late. But this seems to be the exception rather than the rule and overall the agreement is quite good. Based on this, I would limit the use of the sleep tracking by the Huawei Watch GT runner to just tracking your total time spent in bed, which can actually be a useful first step in your sleep tracking. Overall, I therefore give the sleep tracking of this watch 2 out of 5 stars. Now after that very detailed description of the sleep tracking and somewhat disappointing performance, I want to move on to more and more happy news. Let's start by looking at something that the GT runner seems to do okay, though not great, which is measuring your oxygen saturation. Over the last weeks, I measured my oxygen saturation at ground level in the morning and evening using the GT runner. At the same time, I also recorded my oxygen saturation using a dedicated finger pulse oximeter. Oxygen saturation basically indicates the percentage of red blood cells in the bloodstream that contain oxygen. At ground level, my oxygen saturation should be in my normal range, which is generally between 97 and 100%, and should not fall below roughly 95%. Now before moving to the results, if this video is proving interesting to you, a sub to the channel and a like or a comment on this video would be amazing. Now to the results. On the left here are 40 measurements taken with the GT runner and on the right matching measurements taken with the finger pulse oximeter. As you can see the GT runner is mostly within my normal range of SpO2 values. The values do tend to be a bit lower than those taken with the finger pulse oximeter but overall they're mostly in the expected range. 
Ideally, I would also test if the GT Runner can detect a low oxygen saturation, for instance by wearing it in the low oxygen environment of a plane. I've tested the Huawei Watch GT3 in a plane which has the same set of sensors and the results were mixed at best. However, the GT3 also appeared to have worse results at ground level, so it might actually be that the GT Runner truly performed better on me for some reason when it comes to measuring my oxygen saturation. Overall, I'd give the oxygen saturation tracking of the GT Runner 3.5 out of 5 stars, given that it mostly seems to do well at ground level, but also keeping in mind that the GT3 with the same sensors had questionable performance in flight. Now that we got the bad and mediocre stuff out of the way, let's move on to the things that the GT Runner was good or even great at. Let's first look at the GPS tracking. I tested that while cycling to and from work. I wanted to test two things. One, how long does it take for the watch to get a GPS signal, which Huawei claims to be very fast. And two, how well the GPS signals overlap when cycling the same route multiple times. That is displayed here for four times I cycled to work. I started the activity the moment I was ready to leave and I did not provide the watch with any extra time to acquire the signal. The markers here indicate the moment it connected the GPS signal and as you can see it almost always acquired the signal almost instantly which is good. It needs a few seconds to get a more accurate location but it quickly locks on. If we look at the actual agreement between the signals, this is pretty good for the most part, though there are moments where they deviate a bit more, like we saw right here in the beginning. All in all, they're generally pretty consistent and pretty close to the quality we saw for the top of the line Garmin watches I reviewed over the last few weeks. And we see the same thing for cycling back, the signal is acquired quite quickly and the agreement between the four signals appears to be pretty good. The signals are generally pretty consistent, though there are some moments again with a bit more deviation, like we can see right here. Overall though, it still looks pretty good and the GPS tracking is still among some of the better devices I've tested so far, though potentially not quite as good as the top of the line Garmin watches, but only by a slight margin. Overall, I give the GPS tracking of the Huawei Watch GT Runner 4 out of 5 stars, given that it acquires the signal quickly and appears to be pretty consistent in its tracking. The next thing the GT Runner was pretty good at is step counting. To test the step counting accuracy, I went out and took exactly 4,000 steps while wearing the GT Runner. Now, since I do not like counting 4,000 steps in my head, I manually counted each step using this tally counter. Let's take a look. I actually counted my steps in four segments of 1,000 steps, switching the tally counter between my left and right hand, which is what the right and left labels refer to here, and I wore the GT Runner on my left arm. Now these numbers right here are the actual steps counted for each of the four segments by the GT Runner, and as you can see, the number of steps counted is pretty close to the actual 1,000 steps I took. It was a maximum of 30 steps off, which is not bad at all. To put that into perspective, here are the steps counted by the Huawei Watch GT3 and Redmi Smartband Pro I wore at the same time. As you can see, these watches are also pretty good at counting my steps, at least compared to some other devices, and the GT3 performs about the same as the GT Runner. However, the Smartband Pro does even better than these two devices. Still, all devices perform pretty good. Now this shows us how good the watch is at counting steps when it is supposed to count steps. But does it count any steps when it's not supposed to count steps? With that I mean, does it count steps when doing other activities that do not involve walking, like cycling indoors or outdoors or when weightlifting? Well, it also appears to be pretty decent on that front. Here I plotted the number of steps counted per minute during different exercises, in red indoor cycling, in green outdoor cycling and in blue weightlifting, with each dot indicating a single time I did an exercise. In purple I indicate the typical number of steps per minute you would have while walking, which is around 100 steps per minute. And as you can see, even though the watch does count some steps per minute while doing these different exercises, these numbers are far less than when actually walking outside. The watch appears to give the most false positive steps while weightlifting and the least while cycling indoors. Overall, the step counting appears to be pretty good on the GT Runner. Based on the data I've collected so far, I'd give the step counting of the GT Runner 4 out of 5 stars. Now, as was probably pretty clear from the thumbnail of this video, the best thing about the GT Runner, at least in my opinion, is its heart rate tracking. I'll show you the results of testing during different types of exercise. To do that, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the GT Runner against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. We'll start by looking at the easiest type of exercise for a watch to track, cycling indoors. Now this involves very little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise. Here we see an overview of that accuracy. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and on the vertical axis the value according 
according to the GT Runner. The darker black the color, the more dots there are in a certain area. And as you can see, almost all the points are on or at least close to the blue line. This is really very good and no other watch except for the very similar GT3, the Garmin Venue 2 and Apple Watch have performed this well. The correlation, this R value up here is 0.99, which is really high. We want this R value to be as close to one as possible. Here you can see an example indoor cycling session with along the horizontal axis the time and my heart rate along the vertical axis. Now in blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the GT Runner. As you can see there's an almost perfect overlap between the red line and the blue line which means we can almost not see the red line at all and all the training sessions look like this. This again indicates there's a super good agreement between the GT Runner and the Polar chest strap. So this is looking amazing so far, but let's take the testing up a notch. It's much harder for watches to track my heart rate when cycling outside, because when cycling outside there's much more movement and bumpiness, and also much more tension on my wrist, making it harder for watches to accurately detect my heart rate. If we look at the overview of that accuracy, we indeed see that there's a bit more deviation of the points, especially with some measurements ending up below the blue line. This indicates that the GT Runner sometimes detects a lower heart rate than it should. However, overall the correlation is still really high at 0.88. If we look at the individual bike rides, we mostly see a good agreement between the chest strap and the GT Runner, as you can see here in this example for instance. Occasionally we see a bit of a deviation, as you can see here for a small part of the training, and that is what is most common to bike rides, either a really good or a mostly good agreement. Now I did a total of 21 rides with the watch and in only 3 was there a somewhat larger deviation as you can see here for this training session for instance where for part of the training it detected a too low heart rate however compared to many other watches even this is not that bad at all. So during both indoor and outdoor cycling the watch performs pretty well. What about the hardest type of exercise, weightlifting? Well, overall, it's still not that bad as is displayed here. Most points are still along the blue line and again the correlation is pretty good at 0.9. If we look at the individual training sessions, we actually see that quite often the peaks in my heart rate are detected, which is what many devices struggle with. As you can see here, each time I do a set my heart rate increases and most watches cannot detect this given the tension on my wrist, however the GT Runner mostly manages to do it. For some exercises like in this training session right here, it struggles a bit more, as you can see in the beginning of this training where it misses some of the peaks. However, more often than not, it is able to at least partially pick up on my peaks, as you can see here. And we see the same thing in this training session, for instance, with a pretty good agreement. So if you're an Android user, the Huawei Watch GT Runner really seems like the king of heart rate tracking out of all of the watches I've tested so far. The Huawei Watch GT3 performs similarly, though potentially even ever so slightly worse due to its increased weight. Only the Garmin Venue 2 is still very close to the performance of the GT Runner. As an Apple user, the GT Runner only seems to be beaten by the Apple Watch. However, the Apple Watch of course has much poorer battery life and is not available to Android users. However, overall the Huawei Watch GT Runner vastly outperforms almost all other watches, including recently released Garmin watches when it comes to heart rate tracking, and this really surprises me. Therefore, overall I give the heart rate tracking of the Huawei Watch GT Runner 5 out of 5 stars. Now, as you might have noticed, there was one big omission in my testing, testing the heart rate of the watch while running. Now, I couldn't test this on myself because of some knee issues, but I'm pretty sure that the watch can track your heart rate accurately during running based on all of the other tests I did. But I think it's important to note that based on my testing, this watch is not just for runners. In terms of general health features, I think the watch is pretty good, or at least okay, with only a poor performance during sleep tracking. However, I think this watch is suitable for anyone that wants to track their heart rate and location accurately during any type of exercise. Only during weightlifting will the watch sometimes struggle, though it still outperforms most watches in that regard. Therefore, overall, I'd give the Huawei Watch GT Runner 4 out of 5 stars. Now, it's important to note that the Huawei Watch GT Runner is not cheap at about $300. If you don't want to spend a lot of money on a fitness tracker, check out my videos on some cheaper watches and smart bands right here. If you're an Apple user and you want great heart rate tracking, check out my videos on the amazing heart rate tracking of the Apple Watches right here. Now I hope this video informed you about the health and sports tracking capabilities of the Huawei Watch GT Runner. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.